Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delicio with another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing. And today, we're going to be taking a look at a game that I will likely mispronounce. La Cour des Miracles. I certainly hope I'm somewhere in the ballpark there. It looks like it's from two to five players in about 40 minutes from Lumberjack Studio. In La Cour des Miracles, lead a guild of thieves and beggars. Build your reputation among your peers and become the new king of beggars. However, beware... The penniless king watches and will not let himself be done, and neither will your opponents. All right, well, let's take a look at what we've got inside the game here, game box. See if we can get an idea. Oh, okay. Looks like that's kind of a bit of a sleeve. Ah, I see. Well, that's a pretty striking piece of art on the cover there. Uh, you wouldn't know what it was called, and I assume that that's why this was placed over the top. But we know what the title is. All right. Our rule book. It's kind of kind of a linen feel to it. It's a very nice feeling rule book. All right, here we have a setup example in a four player game. Explains how the game is set up. The object of the game is to lead a guild of beggars and take over 16th century Paris. The first player to place all six of their renowned tokens on the game board in the neighborhoods or on or at the renowned square is the winner, okay? Oh, uh, you take turns going cl uh, clockwise. You have a, the order of playing a plot card, which is optional, placing a rogue token, benefiting from the effect of the, effect of the spot, performing the action of the neighborhood, which is optional, and eventually settling standoff. So it kind of sounds like a worker placement game. I don't know that for sure. All right, it explains all the different things you can do here. The description of the different neighborhoods. The game can end in one of two ways. A player places their sixth and final renowned token on the board. They immediately win the game. Or the penniless king token reaches the final space on his path. The game ends. The player with the most renowned tokens placed on the board wins the game. All right, you got the different type, different abilities, the description of the plot card. So it actually looks like a very simple, structured game. Um, the box cover made me think it might be a little bit more involved, but let's take a look. This is an interesting board. All right. Very, very unique shaped board. Um, I think actually we're gonna probably be looking at it like this because this is the orientation of the numbers there. So you've got kind of a walled area here and you've got some water going through. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a nice looking board. Looks like this is where the different kind of tokens are gonna go, all right? Let's take a look at the other components contained within the box. Looks like something that you could put together. I will not be doing so on camera. We've got some yeah, fairly thin, but, but certainly functional. They're not going to bend easily. Uh, cardboard tokens. Very small cardboard coins. Um, a little concerned about the size of those coins, but maybe it's not an issue. A large cloth, almost burlap-feeling bag. I can get my hand in there very easily. Oh, I see what these are. These don't have to be put together. These are just going to be dividers for this area here, so... I think I can actually do that on camera. Maybe, see? I get myself all cocky about it and I can't do it easily, but that is certainly what you're trying to do. <laughs> Put these in. See, I try to do something on camera to get through them, but you can see how it's supposed to work. Somebody that is more dexterous and agile than me. We've got some, I believe these are, I can't tell if they're wooden or plastic, but they're, I think they are plastic pieces. They're pre, I don't know if those are stickered or, I believe they are, but they're certainly nice. These are going to be the, the discs that you place on the player board. And there's a whole bag of them here. Those are actually very, very nice. You've got some wooden player markers in the different player colors. And then we've got a small deck of cards. Let's take a look at those. As if they knew it was going to be me, we're going to start with the Fool. Each player with five or more coins must give you one coin. So, it looks like these are different character cards that you can play. Trigger a standoff in a neighborhood with at least two rogue tokens belonging to different players. So, different cards that look like they can trigger different abilities. There's some really nice artwork on there. I do like the way this game looks. There's a 
pretty striking visual feel to it. Death, ooh, that's frightening, okay. And then the different guilds there where you can probably place your guild markers would be my guess. All right, well, uh, maybe not exactly what I expected off of looking at the, the cover at first blush, but there you have La Cour des Miracles. I'll put the cover on there with the title for you again. Thank you for watching another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.